Um, so I'm going to present a case of a kid I actually just saw in clinic last week, uh, Tuesday, and the kid came in and I kind of started to discuss it quickly with uh, Bob, and he said, oh, you should present that case. So this is a uh, six-month-old kid who was in my uh, 9.30 slot last uh, Tuesday, um, came in because uh, he had some left orbital swelling. Um, he had been treated by his primary care doctor with a course of Augmentin. After he'd been on that about two days, mom felt like it got worse, and she went to the emergency department where um, they saw him and said he had a little bit of injection of his conjunctiva, some swelling with erythema of the upper lid, thought the pupils were equal and reactive to light. They thought he looked around, looked fine, told him to go home and come back and uh, see his primary care doctor in two days um, or uh, follow up with them if things got worse. But nothing got better uh, and so they were a little bit concerned and talked to their primary care doctor and decided that they needed to come see ophthalmology. Uh, his past history is pretty insignificant. He was born full term. There was no family history of any eye problems, no past medical history. On exam in the clinic, he would uh, follow things with his right eye, but would not follow anything with his left eye and got mad when you covered his right eye. His pupil on the right was round and reacted. The left, I had a hard time seeing, but it certainly didn't seem to move at all. His uh, pressure was normal in each eye, which I was able to get with the eye care. He had pretty small palpebral fissures. Um, he was a half Asian kid, so he didn't open either eye a lot, but the left eye barely opened at all. Um, the anterior segment exam on the right eye was clear. When I could get the left eye open, he had a very, not a very, but he had a hazy central cornea there, um, and it was difficult for me to look at the anterior chamber. So at this point, I was a little bit concerned that he had kind of a fuller, it didn't look so much like a swollen orbit to me, but it, it made me concerned that mom was saying that it was swollen. Um, what, what's going on here? Uh, that in addition to um, an eye with a cloudy cornea that I can't see to the back, um, couldn't really dilate the pupil and the pupil was unresponsive. The bad thing that I was really worried about was, is this retinoblastoma with extraocular extension? And that's why he's got some orbital changes. Um, you know, mom said it kind of comes and goes I looked at her phone and it didn't look like it, it, you know, she said it wasn't there right after birth but had come later and I was wondering if maybe this could be something like a lymphangioma which, you know, has kind of a course that comes and goes but that didn't really uh, uh, go with the cloudy cornea. Could this be a tumor like a rhabdomyosarcoma, something, uh, something else that's very worrisome but always thinking of? Dermoid cyst, we see these commonly but that also wouldn't go with the uh, cloudy cornea nor would congenital ptosis. Always think about congenital glaucoma in any infant you see with a cloudy cornea, but his pressures were normal, and that kind of rules that out in a kid. Um, or is this a retinal detachment with the pre eye and that, uh, you know, maybe it's not really a swollen orbit, maybe it's just a small eye that, that doesn't open up as much. I was thinking about those things while I was letting the kid dilate, and uh, I took a brief look at the dilated exam in that right eye and thought it looked pretty normal, but was quite concerned about the left eye. I uh, couldn't get a view at all, couldn't get that pupil to dilate at all, and fortunately that day I was at primary, so I was able to send him over to see Dr. Harry for an ultrasound, which showed a total retinal detachment. And interestingly, uh, an axial length in the normal eye of 20 millimeters and an axial length in the left eye of 14 millimeters. So I thought, oh, this is PHPV. This is a smaller eye with a retinal detachment, you know, a dis maybe a little bit of a, uh, and, and the eye is smaller, so it just doesn't open as much. This, you know, doesn't have anything to do with um, it being swollen at all. Um, and kind of started to talk to the family a little bit about it. Um, they were understandably quite upset, um, but I also recommended that we do an exam under anesthesia just to get a really good look at the right eye to make sure we weren't missing anything else, but I was pretty sure this was what was going on. Um, they were quite concerned that we, you know, although there was a retinal detachment here, that I didn't think we could fix that retinal detachment, but I said, let's just get an EUA, I have OR time tomorrow, and then we can have a better idea of things. So we put the kid under anesthesia here, and these aren't the greatest photos, but the right eye has a nice clear cornea. The left eye, um, and a normal anterior segment, the left eye here, there's a haze here in the middle. The pupil is 
you know, about a millimeter big, and um, the iris is all the way up to the uh, endothelium, and I think that's why the cornea is cloudy. It's just started. The anterior segment doesn't look particularly good. Doesn't like no. no, no, no. The anterior segment actually looks pretty normal. It's just that the the there's no there's no AC. It's, it's about a half millimeter difference in corneal diameter in the OR. Uh, yeah, not not. Seven, Nor yeah, it was 17 normal. Yeah, pressures were normal. And we rechecked it in the OR, and it was, it was even less. It was like 13 and 11 or something like that, very normal. Um, I took a picture of the kid under anesthesia, and you can see that uh, this was at the end of the case, but apart from the lid speculum marks, it doesn't really look like a swollen eye. It more looks like, you know, it's, the orbital swelling was just kind of a red herring. This is just a smaller eye that doesn't open as much. We also did some electro... Uh, physiology and electro uh, ERGs here and you can see that in the right eye looks pretty normal uh, single flash here in the left eye almost nothing and uh, VEP is uh, you know very abnormal as well um, so at this point we were uh, you know I was we kind of looked around inside the eye and um, taking a little closer look now that the kids are under anesthesia and you know, Bob and I both took a look here, and we could see that there was this depigmented area here, which made us a little bit uh, uh, take a little pause and, and think a little bit more about what's going on with the retina. Also, if you look, you know, a little more closely here, you can see that the vessels don't seem to completely go all the way out to the edge. But at this point, we were, you know, still kind of thinking about it and kind of still thought it was uh, PHPV until we got in fluorescein. Glenn was nice enough to come over at the very last minute and do a fluorescein for us, but you can see very nicely, which I don't know, you can't, the lights are on a little bit here, but um, this showed up much better on my computer. Yeah, if we can hit those lights off here. this picture up at all. Whoops. It shows up much better on my screen here, but the vascular retina ends right here. Um, and this all branches out into fans, which showed up much nicer on my computer here, but um, pretty, and uh, as well down here, you can see a little bit, it just ends right here. <coughs> Very oh, dramatic, very dramatic uh, vascular areas in that eye. So pretty clearly looks like something like fever now, um, which we were completely thrown off until you know did this under anesthesia. It does, there's no leak. You know these are the later frames here at, at two minutes. There doesn't seem to be any leakage. It's just all peripheral avascular retina here. You can see it just kind of fans here into a uh, you know ear pattern looking here. So. Um, very glad, you know, you can also see it up here as well. We put this kid under anesthesia to kind of answer that question a little bit better. So um, just to talk a little bit about fever, which is something I didn't see so much in residency or fellowship, but I've seen uh, a couple of cases and picked up on a few cases uh, as an attending. It's uh, characterized by peripheral avascular retina in patients without a history of uh, retinopathy or prematurity. It really kind of looks like ROP. Um, can be very asymmetric and has variable patterns of inheritance and penetrance. This is actually one of my um, patients here who had kind of a similar story, uh, born with uh, retinal detachment in the other eye. This eye actually um, was initially doing much better and then, you know, just suddenly took a turn for the worse, uh, you know, when the kid was a couple of years old and, and started pulling more and more and more, although she had, you know, many times been lasered. Um, <coughs> So certainly can have a course that's very unpredictable and can change uh, change very very rapidly. Um, there's a paper in ophthalmology in 2014 done by Mike Tracy's group that suggests that the the prevalence of fever is 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 quite underestimated. They looked at uh, 74 subjects of 17 families and found that a there were 58 percent of asymptomatic family members had stage one or two fever and 21 percent had stage three, four, or five. Um, so our patient would be a stage one just because they uh, just have peripheral vascular, avascular retina. Stage two is, you know, when they start to have uh, 
you know, some can start to have some exudate and uh, a little bit more concerning. So 35% of these asymptomatic people had stage two, which is kind of that stage that can really take a turn um, and, and start uh, causing a lot of problems in terms of uh, retinal detachment and macular dragging and things like that. So the question for me is how do you pick up on these kids, you know, when you see them in clinic and when can you identify them? I mean, this is one of the few retinal dystrophies that we can do something about and we can prevent vision loss. Um, uh, so what are things we look for? We can look for straightened vessels. Um, we can uh, ask about a family history, but that's not always uh, so much so helpful unless it's positive. If it's negative, it doesn't really help rule, rule, rule this out. Um, we can look for some vit vitreous opacities or things. This is actually one of my other patients who uh, was seen by another pediatric ophthalmologist in town. He had a little bit of nystagmus, had a Chiari 1 malformation, had actually seen Neurop at one time for his nystagmus and his Chiari and questions about whether they wanted to decompress that. He came to my clinic because uh, the other pediatric, he had a head turn and they were considering doing a Keston bomb, so they came to me for a question of uh, whether we should do surgery for the Keston bomb, and I said, well, what, what is your ophthalmologist or what have people said in the past about that tuft of vitreous that's in this, you know, right over his optic nerve, and the family said, well, we don't know what you're talking about. Um, and I sent this patient up to Emmy, and it turns out this kid has fever. Um, and the nystagmus was probably due to the Chiari, and he probably had both things, but he ended up getting some laser in the periphery. Um, vertical strabismus, I have a couple of fever kids that have kind of funny vertical strabismus, but we often see that too in kids who are dragged in um, uh, ROP. So these are kind of some things that I kind of think about. Um, when I'm looking for these kids. Um, the other thing that, you know, is a huge part of our exam, sometimes the biggest part of our exam, is the retinoscopy. And so uh, I always kind of think about uh, when I see kids with really high refractive error. Oh, sorry, this should be mine. Yeah. Uh, do these kids have fever? I have a couple of kids with fever who have really asymmetric, you know, this is a case report that was actually written by my mentor at Boston Children's where they, um, it was published in 99, but looking at, you know, this kid who had some anisometropia, and this is actually the eye with the worst fever, and they conjectured that maybe um, the disease could be associated with this axial myopia. I have seen this in a few cases. I have at least one kid who's a minus nine with fever in one eye and nothing in the other eye. Uh, but I also, you know, this other kid here is, that I showed is, uh, you know, Plano in each eye. So certainly doesn't always have to be that. Um, also, high myopia, kids with really high myopia, I, I, I kind of wonder about that as well. This is a, there was a Taiwanese study that was published uh, in 2002 that looked at kids and said that all of them, had, it looked at uh, nine patients actually with uh, fever that they saw consecutively in their clinic, and all of them had myopia of greater than five diopters by age eight. Um, this is another kid I saw who came into my clinic just after failing a vision screening, and um, maybe a little bit of straightening. This is from his first EUA, but he was 19 months old and had this refractive error. Also had a little bit of exudate here, and I sent this kid up to Emmy and ended up having fever uh, as well. So um, bottom line is I think it's a lot more common, and I think sometimes we miss it, and I think, um, you know, it is something that we can do something about. Some of these really sad cases, like, uh, you know, it, it can cause devastating vision loss, but I think, uh, I think we're missing some of these cases. It's, you know, this is the re one of the reasons I'm so glad we have our pediatric retina service and Dr. Hartnett. I mean, the issue with this case that she presented is that without knowing the diagnosis, this child's only eye is a significant risk of vision loss. We're going to go back and do a combined EUA with pediatric retina service. That eye will probably get uh, laser treatment to the avascular retina. So this is making a big difference. And these are cases, it was tough to sort this out, that we likely would have missed years ago. And so I think that this is a clear case where having a, a you know, pediatric retina specialist has brought this disorder into our consciousness and made us a lot more aware of it. So, do you have questions? Yes. The, in the left eye? Yes. Is the feeding, this was bilateral fever? Or did yes. Or yes. was there a PHPV? No, no, I think so it's... is fever sometimes associated with that marked difference in regards to uh, overall globe size? I don't know the answer to that. If, if, I mean, once you have the retina, this is an eye that probably didn't thrive a 
had a, a retinal detachment very early on so, okay. in, 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 in vascular We know that can affect low growth. So and I, that's, that's what that's I attributed the, the, the very short eye to, <clears throat> was that it had probably, we don't have a prenatal ultrasound. What would be fascinating is if they had one to go back and look and see at what point in development So this thing could have retinal attached retinal. potentially even in Oh, I think it did. Yeah, oh, it did. I think it did. Significantly you or not. That's what we would I think it's a, the size difference. Too. I think it's a pretty tight funnel in there. I think it's been there a long time. So uh, the other thing you're telling is you look at these signs, but it sounds like in these mild cases, the only way you can know for sure is a fluorescein angiography. Am I, am I not right? No, you're correct. That's right. You can't have a fluorescein angiography. No, and I almost did it because to me it looked pretty like a like it looked like a PHPV to me, you know, and that with especially with the globe size, I almost didn't do one. But then I just kind of been thinking, and I've seen kind of I have a collection of these fever kids now, and I'm thinking about it more and more. Um, so yeah, because yeah. even in the OR, looking at the peripheral retina, she and I agreed something isn't quite right here. Let's get an FA, and the FA. Night and day difference. So it was big, just that one deep pigmented area, and then the vessel it just looked a little funny, but not really straightened. I mean, right. you can, it, it didn't, it, it's not advanced <laughs> enough. Yeah. So, good case.